The topic of our discussion is wide versus narrow. Is wide tunica important or no narrow tunica or narrow wing safer? In order to understand why narrow tunica, the hemaclear, the ultra narrow one, is actually better and safer than the wide tunica, we have to go into the mechanics of compression of tissue inside uh, the limb. Let's consider a cut limb, an arm or a leg. With a wide tunica compressing it. Everything inside the tissue is being compressed. The pressures all around inside are essentially the same as the pressure inside the tunica. What does that cause? If we have a nerve inside this nerve is being squeezed and compressed and when you compress a long element like this it has no choice but to elongate, it gets longer. A nerve, when it gets longer, is pushing against itself. And as a result, we can have telescoping of the nerve into itself. This is happening according to a paper published by Ochoa in 1973 at the nodes of Renvier. And is the cause of axon disruption and nerve damage. Tonica paralysis. When we use the ultra narrow hemaclear, we have a much shorter segment that is under compression. The nerve in the middle does not elongate much. The pressure distribution is such that the pressure right beneath, right under the skin is relatively high, 300 or so, but the um, uh, pressure gradient inside the tissue is such that near the nerve, the pressures are no more than 175 millimeters of mercury. The result is that the nerve is under smaller pressure than with the wide tunica, and there is no elongation and no telescoping. And in fact, we now know after more than 300,000 cases with the hemaclear that tunica paralysis is not occurring with the hemaclear. With the tunicate, the pneumatic tunicate, the wide ones, 
The rate of tunica paralysis is somewhere around one to four thousand, according to a recent uh, survey done in Norway. As such, we would have expected in 300,000 cases to have 75 cases of tunica paralysis, and we don't. So the bottom line here is that the ultra-narrow tunica is safer from the point of view of tunica paralysis. So we just saw that there is no tunica paralysis with the ultra-narrow uh, tunica and it is due to the fact that the pressure is lower in the vicinity of the nerve and it's also distributed on a shorter segment. But there is another important parameter here. With the pneumatic tunica, we have a very sharp fall of pressure from here to here. Here it is 300 and here it is about zero. This sharp fall in pressure, we can draw it. It is no pressure, high pressure, no pressure. It's actually acting like scissors. This scissoring, this shear, sharp shear, is happening at the two ends and contributes to the damage to the nerves. So this is the second important reason why with the hammer clear, where we do not have this sharp shearing, we do not have tunica paralysis, whereas with the uh, uh, nomadic tunica we do. So we don't have compression, elongation, and telescoping, and we don't have shearing. But there is another important aspect that has to do with the concept of wide tunica. And that is the fact that with the tunica, the pneumatic tunica, a large amount of tissue a large amount of tissue is under compression, is under uh, uh, squeezing, is under uh, 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 the uh, forces of the pressuring tunica over an hour, an hour and a half, two hours at times. We have actually a situation of a crush injury where the muscle, the, 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 the fat, the skin, all the tissues beneath the uh, uh, tunica are being compressed and crushed. Is it necessary? Well, let's imagine an artery that is now blocked by the pneumatic tunica. Yes, it is blocked very well, but there is absolutely no necessity to block an artery over 10 centimeters of its length where it actually is enough to do it over two or three millimeters as it is done with the hemoclear. It is enough in order to block the artery that the pressure outside the artery here will be higher than the systolic blood pressure. For example, 175 
millimeters of mercury just outside of the artery is enough to block the pressure and the flow into the limb, even if the blockage is over a couple of millimeters. What we gain this way is we avoid the crush of the tissues, which could be quite extensive. So the last parameter that we have to discuss is the volume under compression. And as our patients get older, sometimes with comorbidities, we have to pay attention to the fact that we uh, uh, in, uh, uh, cause the minimum amount of damage when we are preparing them for surgery. Thank you.